um, so this is a this is a large phase three randomized confirmatory trial. And so what uh, the goal of this trial was trying to figure out whether if you add the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax to azacitidine in um, newly diagnosed uh, older AML patients, whether or not uh, that improves uh, survival and remission rates compared to, to azacitidine alone, which, which is often considered as, you know, really the de facto standard of care for our AML patients. And so this was, this was a large, um, as I mentioned, international phase three. Um, about 431 patients were randomized and evaluated, um, and they were randomized two to one to get either the combination of azacitidine and venetoclax or um, azacitidine alone with a, with a placebo. And so um, uh, the primary endpoint was overall survival. That was the key um, uh, endpoint to try to see if this combination really did, does you know, improve the outcomes of our patient with, with several key secondary endpoints like remission, uh, time to first remission, um, and transfusion independence, other things that are clinically meaningful for, for our older animals. The population was older. The average age was about 76, kind of confirming uh, that, uh, that study population. And, the, the overall survival was, was significant. So compared to AZA alone, which uh, provided an overall survival of 10 months, which, exact, which is right in line with what we would expect to see, um, with the combination, the, the median survival was 14.7 months. So, I mean, 14.7 months still seems like a relatively short number, but that's dramatically um, uh, and significantly better given that we've never in a phase three study for this population been able to show a clear survival advantage to anything um, you know, over, over AZA alone. And so this is, this is kind of a really nice milestone um, and, and an important combination for our patients. When you uh, talk about other endpoints that we looked at, we looked at um, uh, key different aspects of remission. And so a remission rate with azacitidine was, was about 18%. Um, and was about 37% with the combination. Um, composite remission rates went from 30% uh, up to 66%. So, I mean, the, the remissions are, are, you know, essentially doubling and, and across many different key characteristics. Um, uh, patients with complex cytogenetics, patients with high-risk genomic mutations, you know, the, the responses were, were improved with the combination across the board. Um, uh, patients responded quicker, so the average time to response was about one cycle as opposed to, you know, four to six cycles with azacitidine alone, so that is also clinically meaningful, um, patients responding faster and, and having improvements in transfusion independence. Um, I will say that um, it's important also to be aware of kind of the, the, the safety and the various different adverse events with, with new therapies. And so with the combination, we did see an increased risk of cytopenias with neutropenia uh, in particular, um, leading to an increased risk of neutropenic uh, infections. Um, and so that's just something to be aware of. When you give this combination, you have to be a little bit more mindful of, of monitoring um, counts, um, especially at the very beginning, and uh, the importance of kind of getting a, a bone marrow at the end of the first cycle to see if your patient's in a remission is really important. And that's a little bit different than, than our basic um, understanding and what we typically do. So in our older patients getting azacitidine alone, we often don't get a bone marrow until like cycle three or cycle four because it often takes that long for them to be in a remission. But with this combination, responses happen so quickly, it's really important to do that end of cycle one bone marrow because if the counts are low, it's probably not because of disease, it's because the, the, the bone marrow has effectively kind of been, uh, the leukemia has been eliminated, but we haven't had normal count recovery yet. And so you wanna wait for that to happen. And so there's just a couple nuances of, of uh, cytopenia management that are, that are important and I'll go through in more detail in the, uh, in the EHA talk. I think that, you know, really across the board, there were, um, you know, improvements in, in response rate and in, in time to response rate in um, overall survival, of course, the key endpoint in achieving transfusion independence. Um, and so I really do feel like really everything um, favored the combination in the, you know, in a really high risk patient population with an average age of, you know, as I mentioned, 76, many patients with kind of secondary AML, antecedent hemologic disorder. I mean, it was, it's a, it's a high risk population that was able to kind of show clear benefit from, from this combination. So I do think it represents um, a new standard of care for, for these patients. Mm -hmm.